we talk about something more on strategy. Um, some of you might be uh, either going into um, build your own businesses at some point or have a business or going to be working in different workplaces. So, so hopefully this is a topic that will be any interesting for all of you. All right. So, so the topic is, is basically called uh, infinite game. And it's uh, hopefully something new. Um, it's, it's not something any uh, new to you, but it's not something that has been, it's been, it's been popularized recently, but um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll break it down to you bit by bit. So <clears throat> let's, let's go through what's the agenda for today. So um, we're gonna talk about infinite and, uh, versus finite games. I'll explain what are those. Um, if you guys are familiar with game theory and how uh, game theory concepts basically help build strategies. This is exactly what we're talking about today. And uh, we're gonna cover some practices of this uh, infinite mindset. Um, we're gonna talk also about uh, quickly about the story of Elevant. Most of you, maybe some of you heard about it, some don't. Uh, also my, my uh, colleague, Hamid Maraj also had a, had a chat uh, Want to talk recently about uh, about himself and Elevant recently, so uh, but I'm going to cover basically this in the context of uh, the infinite uh, mindset, and then we'll at the end we'll wrap up with Q and A just for you guys to raise any questions. All right, let's dive in right into it. So let's talk about finite and infinite games. So what am what am I talking about? Right, um, there are potentially two types of games. There's the finite one and then the infinite one. So what, what are the differences? So in a finite game, basically, uh, the players are identified, the rules are fixed, there is a time frame for that game, and there is a clear winning criteria. And at the end of the game, there are winners and losers are declared. So an example of a finite game could be potentially football. So um, recently you've probably watched the uh, UEFA uh, Cup. I'm not there is any sports fan on the call. Um, and within that, uh, uh, that tournament, potentially, you have you know, teams um, are known. Uh, there are rules that are being followed in, in the game. If you break the rules, you get penalized and so on and so forth. Um, the game itself is set within a time frame, and uh, the tour tournament itself is, is within a time frame. And the winning criteria is known and clear. You know, you score goals, you progress, you, you, make, you, you uh, have uh, basically, uh, you get points based on uh, your standings and there's knockoff and then at the end of the tournament there are there's champions and there are winners and there are losers okay so that's clear that's the same thing like you know with chess with uh, different style of games and on the other hand there are infinite games so what are these infinite games in in uh, 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 on the other side, are in, include known and unknown players. So um, players could uh, interchange. Um, rules are changeable. It's um, nobody sets the rules. It's the rules could uh, could be something one day and uh, they can change. And uh, there's no time frame. And the objective of the game is to perpetuate it. Meaning basically that to prolong this game as, as long as possible. So um, the, at the end of the, there is no end of the game. The, end, the, 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 at the, the within the game, basically that the players that play the longest are actually, that, that's their objective is to, to stay in the game as long as possible. And an example of this is business. So finite players, basically overall, um, beat, try to beat the ones around them. So you have like competitors and you try to beat your competition and become sort of uh, in football and in chess and in 
different aspects uh, of life, um, those players, us, um, try to compete against each other and beat the ones around them. And infinite players, in contrast, basically try to, be to beat themselves. So try to become better today than they were yesterday. So that's, that's basically the, the intro to the, to the discussion. Now, what does that mean? I mean, it's, it's really important to know, I mean, life itself is also a game. Um, and if you think about the objective potentially of life is also to, to per, per potentially be a player uh, uh, in life as long as possible. And it's extremely, when it comes to business potentially, and, and this is uh, the main topic uh, for us today, it's extremely important to know your game because decisions that you make will radically change based on the game that you're playing, or at least if you, if you know that the, what type of game that you're playing. So definition potentially of success is, is not, uh, and this is generally speaking, it's not uh, by comparing ourselves against others around us, but by looking at self-advancement and, and self-fulfillment. So in, in, with the infinite mindset, basically, you, you are your own competition and you try to beat yourself. That's the intro. And then we're going to break down basically this concept bit by bit, just to understand um, um, you know, the details. And uh, in, as I mentioned basically in the early, in the early part of the, of the session, is that with the infinite mindset, we have a couple of practices. I'll break them down, we'll talk about them, and hopefully this will be also clear for all of you. So um, the first practice um, is to have a just cause. And a just cause means that you have a, um, a goal, um, a true, the true north, the, new, the true the, the north star, as they call it. I'll, I'll talk about that basically in more detail. And the second one, the second practice is have trusting teams. Okay. The third one is having a worthy rival, not a competitor, a worthy rival. And the fourth one is have existential flex. It's a bit of a uh, long one, but uh, I'll break it down as well. And the last one is have the courage to lead. Now we'll take these each one of those practices apart, break them down, and um, uh, we'll have some examples of, of each of them as well. So let's start with the just cause. So what do I mean by a just cause? So the idea of winning is usually a temporary feeling. So after whatever game that you win, whatever success story that you have um winning is you, know, you accomplish something I'm not saying that we don't celebrate obviously we, we get happy about what we what we accomplish but uh, but that's a temporary feeling that that fades away eventually so one of the most important things is is really the why why do we do the things that we do so a just cause potentially is um a vision of the future that al puts allows people to to go above and beyond to sacrifice themselves. This is basically the the reason, the objective that people would burn the midnight oil. They would um, give put in the extra hours, do things beyond what they're asked to do, and. I could tell you, give you an example for some of the students here on the call. Um, when when you, you all put a lot of hard work potentially to, to get to where you are and to, to graduate and um, with the potentially the graduation is not really the, the goal. The objective is not for you to graduate. Graduation is a, is, is a milestone, is a point in the overall objective is potentially to make uh, your life a success or to, um, 
to be to become happy eventually. And in a good example, that you know the reason why you, why you eat is not to become fat. You don't eat because of eating. There is a there is a a purpose. There's a there's a there's a justification for 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 what it is that you do. So um, some examples of just causes, and that uh, that uh, you know from industry that uh, led to um, successes basically. Um, uh, Walt Disney potentially when when uh, when they built uh, Disneyland. The cause behind Disneyland was to create uh, a place where you are, where you leave your your sorrows, uh, where you become happy, basically. And um, that's why, you know, for for some of us that maybe visited Disneyland at some point, that is exactly the the kind of ecosystem that uh, that is being built about, uh, there. It's li literally just to immerse you in the experience. Uh, some other examples, for example, like. Um, you know, Apple, um, uh, when they literally first first launched, um, their just cost potentially was to rival um, uh, at that time, it was IBM to, to be, to allow basically an individual to be able to stand to a corporate. So that was their, their cause, that was their, that, that was their drive. And you can see some of, uh, some of that still. I mean, I'll we'll give examples of that. Some of that still in, in the way they do the, the, the you know their, they design their products and services. You can see those examples, and I'll break it apart. Um, let's move into trusting teams. The second practice. So, trusting teams basically is to create that kind of environment where people feel safe, and they don't fear asking for help. Out of fear of retribution, you know, if you, I don't know something, I'm not equipped to uh, deal with this uh, um, uh, position or job or function. I am not afraid to, to say that I'm I am, and I ask for help. That kind of environment. So, uh, building that kind of trust within within teams is not easy, and it's really about leadership. And leadership is really about uh, taking care of people in your charge and not taking charge of people. I'll give an example of this. Um, this is a passenger. Uh, some of you might heard the story. It wasn't long, long ago in 2017. Uh, in it's uh, the Airlines United. Um, uh, this incident became extremely famous, and uh, it was this passenger. He's a doctor that was flying basically on the airlines, and he was asked to um, vacate his seat, and he refused to do so. Uh, he had, I think, uh, a patient that he wanted to to visit, and he was brutally removed from the airplane. Uh, by security guards, and uh, obviously this incident became famous because of the brutality of the incident, and uh, you know that uh, it's, it's obviously wrong what what happened to him. But a hundred percent of the of the crew members on that flight knew that this is wrong. Not one of them inter intervened or tried to stop. And this is because of culture. This is because of fear of retribution. A lot of these guys fear that if they speak or intervene or stop what is wrong, that they will get penalized for it, even if it's, uh, even if it's uh, wrong. So, so this, is, this is many, there are many examples of this. And uh, United uh, Airlines, for example, there's a, famous song called uh, United Breaks Guitars. I've seen it uh, also before this incident where they were, um, uh, where uh, a customer of them basically were uh, filmed them breaking his guitar, throwing basically uh, uh, his luggage um, in the, in the uh, cargo. He saw it basically, they, he saw them, you know, smashing his guitar to bits and then they're giving it to him and then wrote a song about it. And there's many examples of this, and um, 
Uh, so it's not it's not a single incident. And uh, after this, obviously, uh, also became popular. Um, uh, United, basically, Airlines uh, took a nosedive in, in, in stock market, and uh, um, and it, it had basically, obviously, a negative impact overall. But but the idea basically is to build um, an environment, a trusting environment, trusting teams, and to ensure that these situations doesn't happen. And if it did happen, that there is that these teams are self-correcting. And um, so, so that's that's extremely important. So I'll move into the next uh, uh, practice is also having worthy rivals. What do I mean by worthy rivals? And a lot could mistake them basically for competitors. And uh, it's definitely a, a difference. So a worthy rival is it potentially a player that uh, is worthy of comparison, one that help you identify your own weaknesses. So again, if you want to remember what we talked about in there earlier, is that uh, uh, the objective is, is there's no winning basically in an infinite game. So it's constant improvement. So finding somebody basically that helps you identify your weakness and um, you learn from them. And it's, this is extremely important. And I'll give you an example. Again, we talked about uh, you know, Apple uh, previously. This is uh, an Apple news ad in um, 1981. And this, this was extremely famous because uh, when uh, the rival IBM finally decided to get into the game uh, of, uh, of retail and uh, work on the personal computer. Because Apple was, um, their cause basically is to empower individual, uh, individuals. And when IBM, which is the rival, came into that scene, they, they did not feel threatened. They did not think basically that, um, they will eat their market share or because again they're not competing with IBM they're competing against themselves and some examples that I give about this I mean most of us are you know everybody now has a smartphone if it's it's a it's basically um uh became a must in today in today's world and I have I have the you know the usually I the 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 two factions the the Apple, you know, um, fans and the, the Android fans. And I see always the Android fans saying, yes, we have, you know, better specs, better devices and better, um, you know, my camera has, I don't know, 300 megapixels and, uh, and it's better than your, you know, iPhone. And then I see basically them um, arguing that all the time. But if you look at basically um, uh, uh, Apple and the way that they uh, look at their rivals is that yes um, some rivals might come up with a better device better piece of technology but they don't I mean you don't see um, you know Apple executives running around in their headquarters and every time the message is the same every every Apple product announcement that you see they say this is the best iPhone yet this is the best device and they compare they don't compare themselves they don't say that this is the best device in the market or the best, this is better than Google's phone or better than um, Microsoft device. They say this is X times better than the previous one. And they, comp again, it's, they, they look at their rivals, they look at the competition. There's a lot of learning from the, potentially from their rivals, but they, they compete really against themselves. And that's basically the, the idea. Okay. So existential flex, what do I mean by that? Having a flexible playbook. So this is extremely important in, in, in definitely, you know, any, any business that wants to survive as well is to have the courage to, to take a leap to advance the cause, even if it has a hit on your short term. So what do I mean by that? So, most of companies literally look at potentially balance sheets. They look at their um, P&Ls and they look at year, year on year 
and that potentially is uh, is for them is a measurement and you see some companies saying we're the best in uh, i won't be naming some some telcos you know we're the fastest uh, internet providers we have the widest coverage we have so they, they look at these you know finite uh, um uh comparators or uh, or or metrics that they've defined for themselves but nobody really defined but in the end of the day um some don't really look at the long term and in some example i mean i want to say this is 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 illa itself illa bank wouldn't have existed uh, if it wasn't for the existential uh, uh flex that uh, our basically group bank bank abc have demonstrated I'll, I'll i'll give a bit more on that but let me show an example on this first this is uh, Steven Sassen. He's um, an engineer in Kodak. Some of most of you probably never heard about Kodak, but uh, Kodak back in the day were um, one of the most successful um, uh, companies that uh, that uh, specialized in in photography and camera equipment. And Steven basically worked on a project for. Uh, a digital a digital camera this is obviously back way before this you know back, uh, before smartphones were, were a thing and in 1975 Stephen walked basically to to uh, the executive within Kodak and presented the invention of the you know digital camera and what did the executives do um, they suppressed the technology why? Because Kodak was making uh, a massive amount of revenue of film development. They were making, um, you know, the production line, selling film uh, uh, and processing film at the time was making a lot of money. Now, digital camera obviously kill completely, like annihilate that revenue. So what did they do? Even though they, it's one of their guys that they invented basically this piece of technology, they've suppressed it and not only that they patent uh, the idea so they put basically patents on the on the technology to block anybody else from 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 getting there now it took some time of course um, you know for the technology to um to uh, to, to have progress in, in the in the field but guess what you know after literally after um uh, the patents expired, and eventually they did. Other companies like Fuji and uh, some other companies came into the picture and launched basically their uh, uh, devices. And soon after, Kodak declared bankruptcy. Even though they they, they had they, they were the first to do it, and they had the largest market share, and they had all the um, uh, the, the the support and technology and the funding to do it. But because they did not have that extent existential flex to understand that sometimes you need to take a hit uh, and think about and think about long term, uh, because again, at the end of the day is it's not about the today's balance sheet; it's about uh, the next uh, 10, 50, 100, 500 years. So, so that's one example. I mean, other, there are so many examples. There are so many companies that uh, that were extremely popular. Um, you know, just literally a few few years ago, and they don't exist now. One 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 very good example as well is uh, uh, blockbusters. If you heard about them, so blockbusters basically they they work they live on uh, their business model is basically to rent uh, movies and uh, same thing basically Netflix. Everybody knows knows Netflix today and uh, how how popular they are um, and uh, Netflix. Netflix basically sat with the, with um, with blockbusters, and there was a potentially a deal for for blockbusters to buy them out. And blockbusters could have easily done streaming service and all of that, but um, again, executives within blockbusters uh, looked at the revenue stream, and the revenue stream potentially was uh, from late fees of movie rentals. So 
entire model between if of uh, Netflix is subscription. Um, you pay a fixed fee and cancel anytime, and then um, you know there's no late fees. There's no you don't buy you don't rent by the by the movie and all of that. And Blockbuster couldn't see that. Couldn't see potentially that this is the future. And because of that, uh, they also went bankrupt. Um, and one of the reasons, again, you know, it's just an example of uh, of Bank ABC and Ella Bank. Um, and I'll, I'll 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 do a bit of a deep dive on Ella um, uh, um, shortly. Uh, but uh, Ella itself is is a digital bank and. Uh, is a bank that required a lot of effort. It's not something, it wasn't easy that what was done. It was, uh, there was a lot of effort that was put in. There's a lot of people that were brought over and there's, there was a hit on Bank ABC itself. And the hit basically was to uh, redirect attention and effort uh, as a strategic project and also to uh, put in behind its resources and investment and capital. However, this is a very good demonstration of existential flex because Bank ABC realized that uh, traditional model doesn't really work and it's not, that's just not the future. So that's why Ella was born and, and we will continue to be built and, uh, and we'll continue to put basically investment and effort behind it in order for it to grow. So that's, that's an example of existential flex and hope, hopefully that was clear. And the last practice that I want to cover here is the courage to lead. Now, all of the other practices that I spoke about um, um, don't really matter as much as this, um, because if you, again, if you don't really think about the type of game that you're in, try not to imagine somebody who's uh, uh, playing an infinite game versus a finite, play, uh, finite player in the same game. So try to think about and then football. For, assume that football is an, is really an infinite game, and then somebody trying to win the game or score potentially as as much as, much as possible versus a player who's who's simply just you know taking his time and because the objective of his game is to stay and play as as much as possible. We can see that that system is not stable. It breaks, and if you um, if you don't understand that game. Um, the, the kind of decision that you make will be completely different. So it is extremely important that, you know, for, for leaders, and some of you will be, will be leaders, some of you are at, the, at, at this point running your own businesses, to, to know that what is extremely important is to do things that advance your cause. So if your cause is really just, and if your cause is really and you have people be really believe in it, including yourself, of course, then you have to take, you have to do the actions that actually support that cause, even if it's going to hit your um, bottom line and even it's going to uh, uh, basically hurt you for the short per, uh, term. And it really takes a lot of courage to do that. Um, leaders take, uh, have extremely difficult, basically, uh, uh, questions to answer when they want to pick these decisions. It's the same example of you know some of your students, for example, uh, that uh, you know that you you take um, you have courage to say that uh, you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna watch that movie tonight. I have an exam tomorrow, and I have to you know study for it, or have a workshop, or have a delivery, or have a um, uh, an assignment to finish. And you take some decisions that some other people might think that you know, you know, you're uh, might not really understand that uh, decision, but it's 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 a it's a decision that you make to further that cause, um, and that is not easy. And some examples of this, I mean, I'll, I'll give examples like uh, um, uh, CVS. It's uh, basically a pharmaceutical in the U.S. And um, back in the day, basically, pharmaceuticals used to sell um, cigarettes. And uh, during basically the 
uh, the wake of the um, the dangers of smoking, there's a lot of basically of uh, of um, uh, challenges from media, from the you know uh, against basically some pharmaceuticals for selling um, uh, cigarettes. If you look at these, uh, you know, pharmaceuticals, uh, you know, uh, sort of pharmacies, pharmacy chains, um, uh, you know, information that you find on their website or uh, you know their vision or their their cause that that we're that, that they're saying basically is this to allow um, people to live healthier lives. But then you go into their stores and they're selling cigarettes, and and it's you know and. At that point, basically, nobody can deny the dangers of, of cigarettes. So one example of CVS basically chain that uh, they were challenged and then they stopped basically um, selling cigarettes. And it's, a, it, it's basically a very uh, obviously um, a brave decision because um, revenues of cigarettes are were high compared to uh, also what they're selling and they were taking a hit. Now, other pharmaceuticals and in, in, in sort of pharmacy chains, basically in the US, uh, in contrast, you know, our group said, no, we, we, are, we are abiding by the law. There, there is no law that says that we can't sell cigarettes. Some others said, oh, yes, we'll, we'll be selling cigarettes and uh, selling also countermeasures like, uh, you know, uh, nicotine patches and gums and things like that. Uh, it's, it's the same exact, exactly like selling a drug and then selling uh, uh, the other drug that counters the drug that you're selling. So you, you can, but you can see basically the, the differences between these, that kind of business and that kind of business. And with CVS example, um, even though that they're, uh, they got a hit potentially of, uh, of uh, uh, drop of revenue in, in, in because of cigarette sales, but because of that, um, uh, the news becoming popular, people actually uh, stopped going to even like, you know, Rite Aid, uh, you know, pharmacies potentially that were closer to them and they would go to all, all the way drive to CVS because of the stance and because of the position that they, they put themselves for. So there's solidarity from people and people actually sometimes, they, not sometimes, they, they see through that cause. And it's, it's extremely important that this is the, you know, uh, that you build towards that cause. And one last example on this is uh, is also the the Titanic, and the, again, most of us here maybe have heard about the Titanic, but it's basically one of the largest ships uh, back in the day, uh, uh, 1912, basically when when the Titanic sank, and um, at at that time the Titanic had uh, when when it was first basically inaugurated and launched, there were no regulations. Um, for a, a ship of that size, basically, for, uh, for, for safety measures, so things like lifeboats. And the, the regulations were basically for, uh, for, for mainly ferries, smaller ships, and the largest ferry at the time was about four times smaller than the Titan. So what the management did the you know the people behind basically the, the Titanic, they said they understood basically that the Titanic is four times larger than the than the the, the largest ferry, but they went with uh, with the required lifeboats for the for the largest ferry and they fitted that with on the Titanic. Now guess what? Uh, after the accident and after the incident. 75% of the passengers of the Titanic lost their life because of that decision. So courage to lead is beyond regulatory and rules. Uh, the rules or the guidelines of ethics are, are much higher than, than uh, the guidelines that, uh, uh, that are put by regulations, by, by rules. And those ethics basically should drive that this, your decisions because the consequences is this example. Now, good thing is basically that all these practices actually lead to 
positive return on, on businesses. And we have so many examples. We've given so many examples here that if you think the long, the long, long game, if you, think you have the finite thinking, it actually benefits you on the long term. So it's not something, yes, we're doing it for, for the sake of you know, being good and all, but it is actually have a positive impact on, on, on businesses and life overall. Now, this concept that I spoke about is not something that I came up with. It's, uh, it's something that is uh, initially popularized by uh, the guy here on the, on the uh, right uh, called James Cars, and he published a book called Finite and Infinite Games back in 1986. The book is a little bit, uh, you know, a bit uh, difficult to read through, and uh, thankfully um, uh, Simon Sinek, uh, uh, you know, again repopularized basically the idea uh, and uh, launched also another book called The Infinite Game uh, in uh, 2019, also to to talk about uh, to break the, basically this uh, this concept a bit more and give a lot more examples. Also, Simon Sinek has, uh, um, has uh, uh, he's a speaker and a, an excellent storyteller. And um, you can easily find, basically, if you Google um, or look uh, on YouTube, um, Infinite Game, uh, Simon Sinek, you'll find also a lot of his talks and uh, uh, many other examples and the ones that I, that I spoke about. I'll move into the, to the second part very quickly on, on how those stories and how these things basically led to also the uh, the creation of Ella and people you know uh, and the people behind Ella and also the the just cause behind Ella and um, and then at, at the end we'll the uh, we'll open panel for for Q and A so uh, quickly on Ella um, um, Ella's brand Ella is uh, is is all about uh, future it's all about uh, Enablement and uh, the name Millet, basically uh, in Arabic, it's uh, you know towards uh, to 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 achieve or to to go to head towards the destination. Um, this is our brand, and um, this is our cause. So I had a, basically a, a talk with our CEO, and we were talking about basically the cause and why we do the things that we do, and we try to summarize it as much as possible but uh, initially the goal is to put back Bahrain on the international landscape as a financial hub and a home for innovation now for some of you basically you know um, uh, back in also the day you know that Bahrain was had a lot of uh, also uh, firsts. We had the first uh, oil well in the in the region. We had the first airport in the region, and we were potentially the the financial hub also for the region back in the 70s and 80s. And we lost that position. There were other rivals uh, around us, so the likes of uh, Dubai. And we and the likes of uh, you know now upcoming also Riyadh and Saudi, and the hub for as a financial hub we've we sort of lost basically that uh, uh, to some of our rivals, and what we wanted to do is potentially work with um, the government and put back Bahrain on that on that map again, and. Uh, like uh, when you think about uh, you know Google, uh, you think about uh, uh, Silicon Valley. When you think about uh, you know things like uh, IKEA, you think about potentially Sweden, and, and we wanted to think if somebody thought about uh, Ella, they'd be thinking about Bahrain. So that was basically one of the the, the true uh, causes that drive the the thing that we do. And we started in Bahrain, and we're now moving uh, across. Uh, um, uh, region and moving towards other other geographies as well and expanding and that is part of our goals. Um, as as a you know, it itself is 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 based on the idea of reflection that we want to you know reflect you and your needs, 
And uh, these are some of our pillars. Um, we want to uh, achieve superior customer experience. We want to push um, uh, the idea of financial literacy, uh, be responsible, open, and connected, and enable basically um, uh, excellent uh, or basically superior experiences as well. Um, this is our team. Um, most of us are, are uh, Bahrainis, um, more than 80% of us are from Bahrain. And uh, in order for, for you to, to drive or push that cause, you, you need that kind of energy. And we're also, most of our team are young. Um, uh, and, and that's, uh, I'm probably one of the eldest maybe in the, uh, on the floor, but uh, uh, a large majority of us are, are uh, under 35 years old. and. Uh, and also, um, we have uh, a growing team potentially from from um, uh, in the very early twenties as well. So uh, that's basically quickly on our journey. We started in two thousand nineteen, um, and that happened coincidentally with our with uh, COVID. Um, if you remember back in the early days of COVID, it was around maybe. January, February 2020, and um, we had certain roadmap and certain activities, but we immediately shifted our attention towards supporting the cause of, um, uh, of uh, families that were hit by COVID. And we launched basically um, uh, charity donations and, um, and uh, potentially crowdfunding for for uh, uh, for charity for charity supporting uh, uh, COVID and also for uh, we also partnered with Dream Society at that point to help um, uh, terminal uh, uh, children and um, immediately we moved towards the idea of you know the concept of savings and uh, came up with uh, the concept of Hassala and uh, it was the year of Hassala for us and we built on top of it. We built some tools for automation, building goals and things like that, and put a lot of effort in there. And uh, soon after, in 2020, we started also, you know, having um, launched with premium um, um, uh, subscription model as well. And we did also um, added Arabic and we did Jamia um, uh, in the app, which encourages potentially also uh, thinking about saving. And uh, recently, we launched also transfer by mobile number. It was uh, we're the first bank outside of Benefit to also do that. So we collaborated with Benefit. We also been working with them uh, very closely to to uh, leverage on on them being potentially a central hub between for all banks. And we thought that basically this is uh, an excellent feature that uh, shouldn't potentially be sitting on one. Uh, in one place and should be available for all banks and we were the first to launch it um, outside and uh, we've been very busy since the beginning of the year working on um, very interesting features and uh, and uh, and uh, services and uh, and products and uh, we'll be uh, gladly and I want to say that we'll be we're very close on the way to launching a few of them within Q3 and Q4 of this year. So that's basically us in a nutshell, and when, you know, and uh, I'm I'm going through that very quickly, just again for the sake of time. And uh, obviously, that cultivated all of that cultivated in in you know, and that following these practices that you do in in Illa uh, had results. If you look at basically where where we stand, uh, this is uh, uh, our app uh, on on app stores in. Uh, in uh, um, in where, where we are in channels and, and, and Apple and uh, and Google and we we are uh, we're uh, we're always at at the top because of demand and uh, honestly uh, we we completely underestimated our um, uh, uh, the growth that we had we had a very very excellent year in 2020 and we're we're going strong in 2021. And this is not a competitor. I mean, we're not really comparing us against, you know, uh, other idols, but it's it's a reflection of uh, if you follow certain practices, you get you get it's it's you get results out of it. So um, the idea basically behind what we do is is, uh, 
mostly about testing, learning, optimization, and within a creative and agile manner. So I'll give you a good example of that. Is uh, we put a lot of focus and attention on uh, user research. So um, with every product and service that we do, we sit with people, have discussions, and uh, and uh, I'll, 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 I'll we'll be posting, but also ways for, for some of you guys that want to be part of our um, testing groups and want to help us also build um, services that we that we build. Um, we we really like you know for example if uh, you know. One example on Jamia, we had we sat with people that actually do Jamia, you know, ask them why, what are the challenges, what are the what are the issues that they're facing, and how can we make it better. And um, we captured all of that information, analyze it, uh, quantitative, qualitative, and then and then inject it back basically into uh, in the in the design of the product itself. And uh, even after we launch a product, we, we, that, that doesn't stop. We, we, have, we, we sit with people and tell them, okay, now we've, it's there. What's missing? What do you think needs to be done? And that continuous cycle, continuous feedback loop is what drives basically the, um, the creation of product. And, and we listen to social media. I literally have, I have, I go through, I personally and my team and uh, the floor, go through tens of thousands of comments of, on social media and we read every single one of them. And not only that, we go through um, all your app feedback, your responses, your replies, and your ratings. And every single comment that you put in is considered classified in a bucket. Shall we do this? Can we do this? If we can't do this, what are the alternatives? What can we do about it? And that's basically the, the kind of tests that we do. And it's not easy. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of uh, uh, time, and uh, you know, uh, I had feedback recently from from a customer that was uh, that was uh, flying out from Bahrain to uh, for a medical emergency um, to to visit his father, and uh, they needed basically. Um, he heard about Ella and. Uh, and about our multi-currency uh, feature and uh, you know uh, having uh, an account in USD and all of that and uh, wanted to um, to pay for his father's basically operation and he literally his flight was at 8 p.m so, so he opened he downloaded the app opened uh, opened the account at uh, 12. his card was in in his hand by 5 p.m and uh, he had, and then he went on his way to the airport at eight, and he was just flabbergasted basically by by the experience, and and uh, you know reached out to us and you know thanks us for 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 all of that. But uh, um, we try. I mean, we, we're not uh, you know nobody's perfect. We made mistakes along the way, and uh, and we learn from them. We try to improve basically that experience as much as possible to to deliver that kind of service for for people that need it the most. So workshops that we do, I mean, even with uh, with uh, COVID and Corona, like the one that we're having now in the call, they don't really stop us. Uh, we adopt technology, we adopt uh, you know Zoom calls, Teams, all of that, and uh, we do um, uh, we, we do different workshops. Here's one example of a workshop we did, for example, to please design uh, some components of the apps interface, and um, and we collaborate from people from all around the world from from Bahrain, from the East, the West, um, uh, Europe, um, South America, um, India, uh, all over all over the world. And eventually, I mean, these are some stories. I mean, uh, these are slightly outdated, uh, but these are some stories from social media, and, and you can see people engage with us. I mean, uh, it's overwhelmingly it's it's uh, um, the amount of feedback that we that we get and. Not everything we do that uh, that will be, as I mentioned, there is uh, the courage to lead and uh, furthering the cause are important and not everything we do will have a positive feedback, but we really, we care. We put that effort and we put, we listen to everything that we, that we get. And we have, uh, you know, this is some examples of feedback that we get on, on Hassala, for example, that went viral and uh, just people started just, uh, you know, uh, sharing, uh, creating their own content, uh, there was this also the bit on on cards on on our green card 
and people flashing it around and uh, taking pictures with it. And people just, you know, are feeling proud. And I can go on and on. I mean, I, I, uh, I, I will not be able to finish basically within time if I go through uh, uh, some examples of uh, social media posts. But, uh, but uh, uh, the, the response that we got, honestly, was overwhelming. And, uh, and we're very, very happy with that. So, um, and this is exactly the same thing with, with Apple over news. We respond to that. We look at those and we, we give uh, attention uh, to the negative more than the positive. But uh, we look at all positive, negative included. Um, and eventually, like uh, all of that also led to, again, results um, um, for us is, uh, you know, things like uh, winning different awards in the first year of launch, like uh, this is a... Uh, Transform Award that we won in September 2020 uh, for uh, Best Visual Identity. Um, this is another award that we won in Seamless um, uh, in November 2020 for Best Digital Banking, Banking Experience of the Year. Um, this is another award uh, that we got from Gartner for um, uh, Eye on Innovation, also in November 2020 for um, uh, for Fatima, the, uh, basically the uh, assistant that we launched uh, uh, for, uh, the year before. And also recently we got um, a wood pencil award from, uh, it's a branding basically award from, on our brand. And the last one that I'm also very proud of is uh, the MasterCard Best Digital Banking Bank User Experience in, uh, uh, that we got in June 2021. So, so these are some some examples of awards literally in the first year that uh, that, we, that we launched. And uh, as I mentioned, following the practices have results. And yes, it's it's painful. Yes, it is uh, takes a lot of effort, but it is rewarding. And uh, so long as it advances the cause, then uh, and we understand the, the the type of game that we're playing, then we can take that kind of hit uh, to further our cause.